Now I have great pleasure in inviting our past APA president, past CSA president, Dr. Amal Kumar Banerjee to give his talk on One minute, sir. Acute Coronary Syndrome Management Guidelines. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my friends. Respected Muruganathong is my good friend and president of Association of Physicians of India. As the physicians, you will agree that acute coronary syndrome is the most often encountered cardiac <coughs> clinical scenario you face. Now it is your paramount importance the patient comes with chest pain. Now we have to first very briefly within five first initial five to ten minutes just to evaluate the patients regarding what is his diagnosis. Acute A patient with acute coronary syndrome might be due to the the what is going on anyway patient with ST elevation MI non ST elevation MI depending upon the ECG changes and the cardiac biomarkers or the, if there is a no ECG changes or no changes in the cardiac biomarkers, so the patient may having the unstable angina. Now, first the clinical evaluation, as I mentioned earlier, you have to uh, first take the clinical decision whether you are dealing with the HT elevation MI with this uh, from the ECG, clinical history, all these things. In the HT elevation MI, immediate perfusion, ACS, you have to stratify the risk status, no CAD, there is a medical therapy or observation, then the diagnosis and risk assessment, risk assessment is of paramount importance. Actually, upon the risk stratification, we have to decide whether patient would uh, resort to the conservative management or initial uh, intervention management. In fact, in the caption it is written that medical management, actually the term used is the initial invasive management or conservative management or selective intervention management. Now regarding the coronary angiography, we may have the urgent less than 120 minutes early less than 24 hours, invasive procedures less than 20, 20, uh, 72 hours, no immediate intervention, elective intervention. You know, the risk stratification goals are to identify patients who are at risk of death of and non-fatal cardiac ischemic events. He need the time dependent therapies that is the PCI or not. High risk may benefit from PCI or medical therapy urgently, monitored in lower acuity setting, stable or delayed workup and follow up. There are three levels whether we are dealing with a low, intermediate, or high risk of patients with the obstructive coronary artery disease, low, intermediate, high risk for short term death or non fatal MI from non ST elevation MI. Importantly, dynamic ongoing risk oriented evaluation of lower intermediate risk patients for conversion to high risk status that is linked to intensity of the treatment. Patient initial assessment, patient may be that at low risk, but during stay on the end of first day on the second day, patient may turn out to be high risk and he or she needs urgent intervention. This is the very important, we call it the dynamic risk assessment of patient with ACS. Now regarding the risk assessment, there are some methods, P specified methods, just like the TV risk score, they have the seven variables, each have assigned 
one uh, marking for the load expression after two team score load expression three or four intermediate five to seven high risk patient another important more often used is the grace risk prediction risk prediction module here there is a nine variables each have been giving some uh, scores then the total marking depending upon the scenario the total marking is uh, given then here is a plotting the curve as you see more that grace re score there is a increase probability of mortality now the grace re score less than 108 is a low risk 109 to 40 is the intermediate and more than 140 is a high risk patient another is model is there dynamics modeling the use of dynamics models not only allow to estimate early mortality with a high degree of accuracy but also to continuously update the long term prognosis with increasing accuracy now in a very recently published uh, meta analysis as you see that differences between the routine invasive with the compared with the selective invasive the difference difference of benefit is more in the high risk group it is statistically significant difference is about the 21% but it is not so robust is insignificant in intermediate and low risk group of patients now according to ESC criteria for the choice of the early invasive they have identified two primary risk criteria relevant rise and fall of troponin dynamic stt or tuf changes and the seven secondary high risk criteria now invasive strategy is indicated if the patient is at least one high risk criteria or recurrent symptoms urgent that is less than 2 year hours angiography and subsequent pci is recommended in patients at very high ischemic risk just like the refractory angina with associated heart failure life threatening ventricular arrhythmias and hemodynamic stability instability an early invasive strategy less than 24 hours is recommended in patients with a gray score of 140 there is a high risk patient with at least one primary high risk criteria non invasive documentation of inducible ischemia is recommended in low risk patient without recurrent symptoms before deciding for invasive evaluation this is very important now regarding the revascularization strategy whether it is the pci or you are resorting to cabg or the regarding the stent you should discuss the regarding the risk of the patients and the anatomy of the lesions in the heart med protocol as there is no safety concerns days is recommended for the patients for whom you have decided to perform the pci in the setting of acs PCI of non significant lesion is not recommended you have done the angiography there is no significant obstructive lesion only there is some plug burden the patient should not undergo urgent or immediate PCI routine invasive evaluation of low risk patient is not recommended regarding the conservative management the patient who fulfill all of these five criteria that is no recurrence of chest pain no signs of heart failure no abnormalities in the initial ecg or a second ecg at 6 to 9 hours no rise in troponin level at arrival and at 6 to 9 hours no indicible ischemia the patients without all these things they have undergo the conservative or selective invasive treatment 
Now in the elderly group of patients, for the frequent atypical presentation, they should be investigated for ACAs at low level suspicion and elderly patients should be considered for an early invasive strategy with option of possible revascularization after careful weighing up the risks and benefits. Now for the diabetic patients, early invasive therapy is indicated with this. Now regarding the almost the same recommendation from the recently published American College of Cardiology Foundation, American Heart Foundation, their focused update of 2007 recommendations, they have identified all these criteria where the, with the patients having all one, two or three, any of the, uh, these high risk criteria, they should undergo invasive procedure. Regarding the conservative, low risk score that is TME or GRACE, patient or physician preference in the absence of high risk features. Again, uh, the recommend, the, their class 1 recommendation is patient with very high risk with the refractory angina or the patient who has been stabilized initially with the conservative management but with the one of the high risk criteria they should undergo early PCI. Now class 2 recommendation, a patient who has been stabilized, not at high risk, he may undergo uh, early invasive therapy and class 2B, the patient initially stabilized with conservative therapy but patient is having one or two high risk criteria. You may or the patient may resort to conservative therapy when the physician and the patient undertakes or they think that this can be done. This is according to the patient and the physician's choice. When there is extensive comorbidities, early PCI in ACS is not indicated. Also, when the diagnosis of ACS in doubt, early invasive therapy is not indicated. An early invasive strategy should not be performed in patients who will not consent to revascularization regardless of the findings, which I have mentioned earlier. Patient might be high risk, but patient is not given consent. You should not undertake the patient to invasive therapy. Now, this is the flowchart that initial conservative strategy after triaging the patient who will high risk patient for the invasive therapy or those who are not at high risk for the low risk, they should undergo the conservative therapy any of the anticoagulants and initiate topidegol or ticagolor. A ACH patient at presentation for P2Y12 inhibitor, you can use either clopidogrel or ticagolor, but you mind that you should not use prasugrel. That is not indicated, that is not recommended. Regarding the invasive strategy, again, initiate uh, anticoagulants, pre-catheterization, antiplatelet, topidogrel. In very high risk patients, uh, you can also have the GPI. Then after the angiography, again you can try, you have to try it depending on the lesion and the risk stratification of the patient. Either medical therapy, whom you have decided to perform the medical therapy, you just stop the, if you have already started the GPI, use the stop GPI, continue the anticoagulant and the double dual antiplatelet therapy and for the PCI as usual. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you, sir.